This is a tutorial for AutoSway, a fun new tool for, well, making your layers sway in After Effects. AutoSway has two main modes. It can either work with puppet pins or it can work with multiple layers. First, we'll cover how it works with the puppet pin tool. So take any layer, so we'll just go ahead and create a solid here, but it can be a shape layer, it can be a footage layer, it can be whatever you want. And then grabbing the puppet pin tool here, I'm just going to put some pins down the um, sort of spine, if you will, of the layer. Once I've done that, just select the layer and under the puppet pin tool mode, hit apply. What that's going to do is it's going to create some uh, control nulls here. They're all guide layers, so they're just sort of uh, invisible to the render, but they're ba basically it's what allows this animation to happen. The very top layer is a layer called Sway Control, and if you reveal the effects controls for that layer, you will see all of the different controls that you can have for your swaying. Now, in order to better explain what all of these controls do, I'm just going to do a little visualization. So I'm going to take the bottom uh, null here, and I'm just going to, for the position, I'm just going to turn on the, um, I don't know what that button does. It, it basically shows how the animation is going to happen over time. So once we do that, once we have this revealed and we select the position, we're going to go back to the... Um, to the sway control and expose it and we're going to increase the sway distance so the sway distance as you can imagine is um how far the swaying goes back and forth and you can see here um this line here it's sort of showing uh the animation of this the sway so that's the sway distance as you can see if i go ahead and shorten this you can see that that distance of the swaying is getting shorter so I'm going like really extreme here, but um, that's basically what the sway distance is, okay? So there's a very long distance. Now sway roundness is how round this little um, sort of sway arc is. So right now it's not very round, so if I increase the roundness, um, now it's because the distance is really high, I'm going to go ahead and shorten the distance again. So I'm just going to bring the distance down. Uh, come on. Okay, so now that we have, let's go ahead and enter like say a thousand. Okay, oops, that's a hundred. We want a thousand. Okay, so now that we have a thousand, we can go ahead and increase the roundness, and you can see how this arc, right, this sway arc. So now we can go ahead and decrease the the distance some more. Okay, so now we can really see how the roundness so if i keep going on the roundness essentially as i keep increasing the roundness as you can see it eventually makes like a full circle so if you can imagine the swaying um is this layer just kind of going back and forth on this little arc so sway roundness is how round this arc is and sway distance is how um essentially the the radius of this this circle right um so that's what the sway distance does. Oops, that's a lot. Now, of course, I'm not making a very good sway because really you want to have all of these uh, values set at kind of like smaller levels. I'm just doing these extremes so that you can get an idea of what they all do. All right, so speed, of course, is how fast it's going to go back and forth on this arc. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at all of these, um, so we'll go ahead and turn on the little switch to visualize all of the positions. This will actually help us with the rest of our explanations here. Okay, so now I'm gonna select all of them. So you can see now how they all have the same um, roundness, but now if I, if I do offset, um, offset is where it basically um, starts in the arc, the animation. So if I go back to zero, so you can see here, zero is over here. So if I go ahead and say, for example, go to 10, it's essentially, um, if you know uh, what phase does in a, in a sine wave, it's essentially like the phase. It's, it's what point in the arc in, 
you know, the animation is. So if you have several of these, and I'll explain in a little bit how you can have several of these, and you want them to have sort of a different start point, you can use offset to offset the start point of that swaying. Um, then we have lag factor. So I'll go ahead and put the offset back to zero. Now, um, lag factor is, um, is also an offset, but it's an offset from the first point to the last point. So if I go ahead now and increase this, say, to 10, Oh, maybe let's go 100. Okay, so now you can see the top one is still at the beginning. The second one is kind of like halfway. The third one is almost done, and the fourth one is fully done. So let's say split that. So as you can see, it basically sort of it does like this like delay from the first uh, pin to the last pin. That's what lag factor does. Now, scale X and scale Y is essentially scaling the size of this um, circle. So if you want to just sort of make it wider um, on X, which is basically, let me just make this really kind of extreme. So you can see here how I'm sort of essentially stretching it. That was really extreme. We'll go back to 100. So I, I just basically stretched it on X. You can see that. So that's scale X, and now I'm gonna go back to zero, so you can see now how it basically goes back to what we had. And now if I do it on Y, it's gonna essentially do the same, but it's now sort of scaling it up and down on the Y, so it's kind of squish it from the sides. So this is how you can kind of control the motion of your sway. Um, and now let's take a look at wind. So wind is how uh, the sway blows in the wind. So if we go to the first pin uh, and take a look at what we got here, we have, uh, let's try uh, all of these. One of these, yeah, here we go. So p pin has this um, wind strength. So again, we're going to go ahead and visualize this guy. So we'll turn on the, um, the visualization for the wind. If we go ahead and look at it, now this one we'll have to take a look at in the um, graph editor, sorry, hold on, it looks like it's still showing all of these other ones. So let's go ahead and turn off all of the positions which we're not using. Okay, now let's go and just take a look at the wind strength. Let's just, uh, so th these are obviously inter interrelated. So the, the um, let's go ahead and increase the strength again. All right, so now as you can see, the wind interval is how you know, how often the wind kind of goes back and forth. So by increasing the interval, you make the wind sort of sway back and forth more often, right? And here you can see what the wind wave looks like. So by increasing the wind, um, it, it, it's not quite obvious because it's increasing the units here, but essentially um, the wind strength is how, you know, strong it pushes it back and forth. And the wind interval is sort of, I guess, kind of like the speed, but the frequency of that wind back and forth. And then you have this wind loop period, which essentially allows you to loop when um, this sort of has a perfect looping point. So let's say here at, at one second, if I were to enter this at one second, um, you can see here now the wind has its complete perfect loop point at one second. Again, at two seconds, you see here it's exactly the same point. So it's actually looping. So uh, you can still adjust um, your um, you can still adjust your interval and um, and your strength. So it's interesting that when we um, enter the loop, it actually frames this uh, animation. But so here now I changed it to uh, two seconds. So you can see here it's kind of doing the same exact animation every two seconds. So those are all the controls that you have for the puppet pin mode. Excellent. So let's go ahead now and just delete all of this stuff delete and um, that's probably not the way you should delete you should actually use the delete tool here okay so now we're gonna take a look at layer mode so we'll for layer mode we'll also start with a solid but we'll make the solid um, comp size and we are going to start by using the um, layer tool so if you can see on layer mode next to apply is a button called tool so the that's the um, auto sway layer tool and it has basically two things it can do. It can either split the layer for you or it can duplicate the layer. So this is pretty self-explanatory, but let's say, for example, I want three uh, this layer to be split into three parts 
uh, horizontally, I would just say three there. Horizontal division, keep the center point in the center, and then just hit apply. And the expansion button um, expands the edges of each layer just slightly in case you're getting a little hairline. Um, that, that should cure that. Okay, so now as you can see, now I have three layers and um, it might be hard for you to see, but you can see that the three layers are just right there next to each other. And so now once you have the three layers, actually let's go ahead and undo this, undo the layer split. And we're gonna actually do it by doing it vertically. And we'll go ahead and hit okay. So now it split the layer uh, so you can see here the three layers, one, two, and three. So now the layer tool um, <clears throat> works in the order that you select things. So if I go ahead and select the top layer first and then the bottom one, it's gonna, and then I go ahead and apply layer mode, it's gonna apply the sway using the top layer as the anchor, if you will. So if we go ahead and preview this, so now you can see how it's swaying um, you know, basically based on the top layer and we'll go ahead and undo this. So now we're going to go ahead and select the bottom layer first and then the last at the top and go ahead and apply that layer mode and go ahead and preview this. So now you can see it's, um, it's done essentially the, the, uh, reverse. I forgot to mention by the way that in puppet pin, in puppet pin tool mode, if you hit on options, um, well actually that, I guess this applies for everything, but here you can do things like turn on cer certain options uh, for when you apply the mode, which is, they're all very, very much pretty self-explanatory, but you can basically reverse the start and end point. Um, you can r randomize the lag factor. You can reverse the lag factor. You can lock the null layers. Um, and for the puppet tool, you can fix the end point. And notice here how it says don't fix start point because as you can see, um, the start point is fixed. So if I go ahead and undo this and then um, say don't fix start point. So now when I apply it and I, and I, and I, and I preview this, that, uh, that the main, it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but that main layer now is also swaying, which it wasn't before. Um, okay, so we're almost done. Uh, let's go ahead and delete all this. So like the way to delete this, by the way, is you select all your layers and then you go ahead and hit delete and it deletes the control point for you. And in the case of the, uh, you know, puppet pin, you know, you would have several nulls that would be deleted. So we're going to go ahead and delete all of the, uh, and also unlock the, the pieces that I made. We'll go ahead and delete all the layers and we're going to go ahead and create now a uh, thinner. So 200. So we'll have this, we have this thin, um, the thin layer that we're going to go ahead and split again. So we'll go ahead and go into the tool. We'll uh, split it uh, horizontally. Actually, so why don't we use the duplicate tool? Uh, let's go ahead and close this. So let's go ahead and move this over here. Let's say I wanted to clone, I don't know, five of them over here. I could use a copy tool. Sorry, not the copy tool, the, um, the layer tool again. And it has this duplicate layer mode. So I could do five copies and I want to move them on X by 100 pixels each. So I'm going to hit, hit apply. And so here it basically gave me five copies and they were all offset on X by 100 pixels. So you can see there. Um, so then again, you can also now go ahead and in, in the order that you select these, so go ahead and close this, apply it in layer mode. And then, you know, here we have the, um, as you can see, we have the sway, uh, in the order that I selected it, but that's not what I wanted to do. I just want to show you that other option. So let's go ahead and select them all and hit delete. So just ignore the errors and delete this uh you have to unlock them and we'll go ahead and delete them all okay so i'm gonna go ahead and use the puppet pin tool again so i'm just gonna make this very simple just for do four pins and i'm going to now select this make sure my options uh don't fix the start point uh everything's normalized so i'm gonna go ahead and apply puppet pin pin mode so if we can see how this works, we might need to make this a little bit more obvious. So I'm just going to make the sway distance a little bit bigger. So as you can see here, it's just swaying back and forth. So now what I want to do is I want to actually have a second, um, a second, uh, uh, I don't know, sway, if you will. So I'm just going to duplicate the original 
um, solid here and move this over you can see that doesn't work so the way you have to do this is you want to uh, we'll go ahead and delete everything and start from um, over because what you want to do is duplicate them first so I'm just gonna select everything and hit delete oh, sorry you have to start with the like, sway control down and then you can hit delete okay so now we're gonna duplicate the layer so we're gonna have three of these guys and so I'm gonna select the first one put some puppet pins down well they already have puppet pins yeah they all does this one yeah this one let's see Did it delete the pins? Oh no, there's still the pins there. Let's see. Yeah, they still have the pins. Okay. So just select the first one and hit apply on the puppet pin. Um, so now when I select on the second one, right, and I hit apply. Oh, sorry, I hit layer mode. I actually want to do uh, puppet pin mode. Okay, so and then I'm going to do the same for the third. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and play this. So you can see that they all kind of have a slightly different um, thing. If we go ahead and increase the sway, let's say to 300 for, or actually let's see, 500 for each one of these. So each control now, as you can see, each control controls each one of these and it tells you what the name of the main layer. I didn't do the best job renaming these, but uh, so as you can see here how it's like all slightly things. If I wanted to, well, actually, I just did this by hand, but that would have been great. Let's say, for example, I go ahead and tweak this where I want the uh, sway distance to actually be 450. I want the sway, round, sway roundness to be 100. I want the speed to be 200. Um, um, I don't know. I want the offset to be 10 whatever, set all of these settings. Um, and now I want to copy all of this to the other sway controls. I can just grab the sway control, hit the copy tool and say, okay, copy source. So I'm going to uh, refresh. So it loads all of the controls here. So I'm going to copy it from this top one from 33 and I'm going to paste it. So I have to hit refresh here and I'm going to paste it say to 32. So now I go ahead and apply it's basically saying, um, do I want to actually do this? Yes. So now if we go to uh, 32 here, you can see it copied all the same controls, but 31 still doesn't. So we can do the same thing here. We can actually now copy from 32 or from 33 or whatever to uh, 31 and hit apply again and uh, hit yes. So now it's basically a little convenient way of copying all of these effect controls to um, the layers so that you know when you have a whole bunch of them you can um, easily copy the values back and forth but here you have it so now you can see we have our our swaying for these three layers so I believe that's it I've covered all of the details and um, there's also a user guide included so you can also explore that way but uh, it's a lot of fun to play with this it's very lightweight so it's easy to play with and easy to use and uh, we hope you enjoy it